What is going on guys? It has been forever since I've made a video. Oh lord, it has been forever. What's going on guys? Long time no see. What is going on everybody? Feels like it's been forever, but it's only been... It's been 84 years. I know I have said this a lot, but man, has it been a long time. Have y'all missed me? It's been over a year since I've made a video, and I've got a bunch of excuses as to why, um, but really I think it just boils down to, for some reason, I just haven't been excited to make a video, but we have done a lot of stuff with a car, a lot of good things. It has won a bunch this season. Um, as you can tell from the title of this video though, we started it off really rough. So let's get you guys caught up. It has been over a year. The car hasn't changed too much, minus some body panels and other stuff like that. So let's just show you guys a rundown of what's going on. But first, let's just get out of the way because I'm pretty sure a bunch of you guys are here just to see what actually happened in the wreck. So let's get that out of the way and let's show you guys what happened and then we'll explain more afterwards. All right, so now that we got the click-baited uh, thumbnail out of the way, it wasn't that bad, just tap the wall. Before we can uh, go further, I think, with this video, we've got a lot of updating to do, like I said. One of those being, uh, I know it's been a long time, but if you notice, the shop scenery is different, and so I just wanted to update you guys. This is the new shop. It is smaller than the old one. Um, the actual workspace of it is about the same. Um, Got a little bit extra room with the loft. It's still a mess from when I first moved in back in April. But check it out. This is some future project stuff. Uh, I have been busy and I have been working like crazy. Got the RX-7 over here. I got Kyle's NSX back in here. I've been making some pretty good progress on it. We'll just show you guys before, uh, you know, got the floor all redone, seat stuff made, back main hoop is all made. Dash bar and uprights are made. The A-pillar bars are made, so. There'll be more on that later, um, which you guys will probably see if you guys watch Kyle's videos. You'll see it on Kyle's videos. But back to what has happened this year with the car and what happened earlier this year. And we'll just go through this whole race season, the whole timeline of it, and just show you guys the bad, the good. You know, a lot of it was more good than bad. But let's start with Utah. So here's what the car looks like currently here in november as you can tell fender took a beating i found this one in a junkyard it's pretty messed up too the control arm was super bent the tire got messed up the exhaust got messed up the new fiberglass door got messed up and this is what makes me the most sad is the quarter panel i don't know if you can kind of tell but it uh like smushed the quarter panel into the tub and it's like a really weird um like dent i guess you could say but this is the door sh is open right now but it does shut no problem it just got dented pretty bad this is what made me the most sad was that the quarter panel got beat up but other than that really not too terrible this is the exhaust from that deal i had just made this too which sucks this nice five inch titanium downpipe. but what's kind of gnarly is it literally buckled itself over pretty bad and it didn't break which is kind of nuts pretty cool i don't know what to do with this i was thinking it's kind of silly i gave the fender away over to this dude that was in utah that watched all my youtube stuff but i was almost kind of thinking like this piece is kind of neat thinking about maybe i don't know if you guys would be interested in it i have no clue i don't even know if anybody's gonna watch this video to be honest but there you go so that's what i'll stop this thing that's what had happened early this season uh, we had an incident right after that, but that was that Utah race was a no prep race. We've been out there before. Uh, we were there last year. The car actually went really fast there, and that's actually where we raced Nate in the semis and lost to him pretty bad. Um, so we went out there. I thought it was going to be way faster. Really, the only excuse I have, uh, 
was I just put too much in it. For the surface, the surface was horrible and covered in like weird sandy, silty stuff. And I just put way too much power in it for that surface. And we tapped the wall. I should have probably lifted and kept going, but for some reason, don't know why, I just stayed in it and tapped the wall. So that's what happened. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to some better stuff. So what the hell just happened there? Well, what that was is, yeah, you saw me go in the ditch. It wasn't a tune-up problem. It was a brake problem. So another upgrade that we did on the car this year was we put strange brakes on it. Um, if you're doing any type of brake stuff, which now I know because that happened to me, that was literally the next pass. After I fixed all the stuff from Reckon in Utah, that was the next pass that happened. Pretty shitty, but... It was because I didn't test any of the brake pressure. Uh, I have I have since got a brake tester, geez, a brake pressure tester, and I have uh, put a prop valve on the car and tested it. Needless to say, I bought all the stuff that I was supposed to have, and was told I didn't need a prop valve, and we found out no prop valve is no bueno. Um, I uh, locked the brakes up on, in the rear when I went to go get on the brakes and it just looped me out and shot me sideways. So the nice thing was is it didn't damage anything besides flat spot and some tires and uh, hurting my pride a little bit. But we got that fixed. Now we can move on to the good stuff. And it's not going to get good right away, but this next event we were up in Wyoming, up in Casper or Bar None. Uh, they have a legal street race up there. And we're up there testing, trying to shake the car down after those two incidents. So those are these videos. So those were the first two passes back after wrecking earlier this season. Just two little shakedown passes. They still went pretty quick. The first one wasn't all that great. The second one, though, as you can tell from the video, I remember who we raced, but they broke. That's why it doesn't look like there's anybody else making a pass next to me. But I think it went like a 580 or a 570, which is pretty quick on that road. Um, it is concrete, but it's not that fast. Uh, this event got ended early because somehow my trans brake wires on the steering wheel got wrapped up around the wires for the digital dash on the holly and it yanked them out they fell on the floor and they started arcing out and smoking and i thought i was on fire so but that ended our day early that day but it was a good time uh out there and getting the car sorted and just building some confidence back in the car after what happened earlier this year so the next race i'm gonna be showing you is our back of the track race that's down in pueblo colorado at the track there we were able to make two passes they went all right uh, i think we ended up having i think the first hit it spun and then the second hit i found out i have a fuel pressure issue that was pretty bad it shut the car off and fuel pressure was tanking up top and we ended up figuring that out it's just the fuel filters but i'll show you guys those two runs right now
definitely not what we wanted. It is better, but not what we wanted. Um, the car had sat for a while all winter, and I don't know if I cleaned the fuel filters or not, but it sat for a while. As you can see from this picture, that style filter has nothing on the inside to stop it from collapsing, which I'm assuming it collapsed because it was kind of clogged. I should have cleaned it. I didn't, but now we got radium fuel filters in there uh, that are 10 microns, so, and they have like a perforated tube on the inside of them. Anyways, they can't do that again. So now... We're headed back up to Casper for that same race, uh, and we do a lot better this time. So I'm actually really excited about now. We're starting to step in the right direction of finally making some progress on the car from last year. Huge step in the right direction, starting to get this thing figured out. That was our first time making it in the finals this year. It's crazy, like, looking back on it now, doing these videos and going over them. Uh, the first finals that we were able to make it to that year, it went really good. That road up there in Casper is really tricky because the right lane is pretty bad. For some reason, I don't know exactly why, but the roads are grooved slightly different or something. But the left lane is very fast, like almost two-tenths faster than the right lane. So in the finals there, I'm not quite sure what happened. So that day it was really hot. I think it was like 100 degrees out that day and the DA was really bad. I think it was like 9,000 DA. So this little 5.3 struggles pretty bad up here at elevation. It takes about 9,000 DA, it takes about six to six and a half seconds of spool, which wasn't a problem all day, right? I'm not trying to say any excuses, but the flagger just got a little rushed in the countdown. So normally you know i don't have any issues getting up on the two-step well the problem with that uh being rushed is it left on a bunch more rpm if you go back and watch the video it spun right off the button well it spun because we have a three-step uh offset right an rpm offset on the three step so it'll allow it to go way above target launch rpm and then it drops back down to what you hear every time so i think that pass it left at like 4900 rpm <laughs> which is way too high i think normally it was trying to target like 4200 so it, le it left just didn't have enough time to make the boost and that's what happened which is all good that's part of racing uh unfortunately that's what you sign up for sometimes and that's how it goes this next race is steel city and boy i am excited because we have figured this thing out it is flying and you're about to see that in these next videos
All right, so that was my bad. I had the car in third gear and it just pushed right through the trans brake. I thought I had the trans brake button pushed, went to go stab it. And since the trans brake doesn't work in third gear, it uh, just rolled right through it. So there you go, out of small tire, big bummer, but we're about to go up for the big tire. I think it's a finals, big tire finals, I believe. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, baby. We officially, first one of the year was in big tire at the second race of Steel City. Uh, if we wouldn't have shot ourselves in the foot leaving in third gear, I really think we would have been able to win both small tire and big tire at that event. But such as racing, that's just what happens sometimes. So this next race we're about to go to is the third race up in Casper for 2024. And it's no different. The car is pretty figured out. We do, so up in Casper, they allow first round buybacks. Uh, first round, they they power washed all the rubber off it, so it was really bare. So it was way slower, even the left lane was way slower. And I definitely struggled first round and I got beat by Lance. So you're gonna see that, but we were able to, it just might be a little confusing. So I was able to buy back in after first round. And then you guys get to see what happened from there. So let's roll those clips from the last Wyoming race of the year. So what happened with that finals? Big issue was the finish line camera was in 30 FPS and it was that close. Well, I guess it depends. You could argue it both ways, kind of. And it really sucks because there's not like a definitive frame where you see somebody cross the stripe first. Um, Cause like the one before is too early and the one after is too late and they didn't want to call it. So the big problem was the camera wasn't in 60 FPS for the finish line. Uh, Austin left on me and then his car shut off like just right before the finish line and then I come flying up. So it was a close ass race, like super close. I don't think we've had a race closer than that. And uh, it sucks because there was no definitive way to tell who actually won and nobody wanted to call it, right? It's not my job to call it. It's not his job to call it. It's not Austin's job to call it. It is the I guess the flagger's job to call it. Nobody wanted to call it. We were going to split it anyways because that's my boy. And uh, that's, that's what we did. But it still sucks because at the end of the day, there wasn't like a, a real winner. So, uh, but nonetheless, the car is fast and it's working really well. So this is, that was the last Casper race of the year. And then now this next race is the third Steel City of the year. And it was a good one.
soon now. Hey, fuck. Oh, fuck, bro. Man, I forgot how excited I was when I finally got that win. So, for a lot of you guys, I'm sure you guys have forgot, but this back of the track race called Steel City No Prep in Pueblo, Colorado has been going on for, this is the third year. So I have been trying to get a win here ever since they started doing the race on the back of the track. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I stopped going out on the street and doing hood rat stuff just cause it just got so sketchy and was able to do stuff back here. So this finally happened. I finally was able to get a win and man, did I have to work for it. Austin is hard to beat. It, our cars basically run almost the same number uh, every pass. It really comes down to the light and if somebody messes up. So that race in the finals, I raced uh, another Fox buddy, John Larson, another dude that's a heavy hitter. He's going to be fast next year. There's a lot of fast dudes now uh, at this race. When it first started, it wasn't anywhere near as fast as it is now and it is insane i would love to share time with, the, with you guys my only reason for not doing it is because it's not because i'm want to be secretive i feel like there's this problem right i never thought you could go this fast on this surface until i ran the numbers that i did and i feel like what it does is it's a big turnoff for people that are just getting into it and that are still learning because they might be four, five, six, seven tenths behind and feel like there's no way to figure it out and catch up when in reality, you know, I've have tried and I've been to every single Steel City event with my car trying to learn and get faster and finally was able to make it happen. And it was with a PB pass and I cannot believe how fast it was. So I'm super pumped. I'm still super pumped about it. Finally won small tire at our local event and now for the final event of the year. It's an invite only race for 10K, Steel City, the survival of the fastest. And that is what we're about to roll for you guys right now. What the hell happened? What happened in the finals? Did I get beat? What happened? It's really hard to tell. It was declared that Austin jumped, uh, which is all handled by the starting line people and the flagger. It's nothing to do with me. And it's kind of a similar situation to our last race in Casper with the finals and the finish line camera being in 30 FPS. The tire crack guy did not realize that there's an auto setting on the iPhones that to optimize quality in low light situations, it will change the FPS from 60 down to 30. And so his camera caught the jump in 30 FPS and it's it's so close. Like he almost nailed a perfect light and the video quality is just so bad. Uh, but we were declared the winners. It was a weird one, a really weird way to end the year. That survival of the fastest, I've never had, I mean, which I get it, you know, they're trying some stuff and they're gambling on the starting line of trying to get the hit because the hit could be worth anywhere from two to three tenths easy. It was wild. Three jumps. 
I only got one clean race, uh, which is, like I said, just a weird way to end this season. But, you know, I was really excited about it because my very last pass of the year there was my very fastest pass, which is awesome. My goal this year was to just try to go out and go as fast as I could and race myself every single round and not slow down. Um, the hardest part I feel like a lot of people have is they might make like a good pass second round or third round and then they can't back it up. So I try to, you know, first round is always the slowest and then I try to pick up a tenth or two up until the finals and try to run my fastest pass as my last pass of the night and ended up doing that and I'm stoked about it. The car is super competitive. There's some things that I can fix with it and make better for sure. Like always, it's always a better way to make something more efficient and work better, which I've already done some changes, but we'll hold those off for later since this video is already so long. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a different style and I know it's not like vlogging day of the event during the race, but if you guys liked it, let me know down below. Sorry, I've been so busy, or I guess not even busy and not even sorry. I don't know why. This weird's been a weird year and I haven't been uh, too motivated to make any YouTube videos, but We'll see how the rest of this year goes and next year goes. I'd like to make some videos. I hope you guys liked it. And I guess I hope some people watch it. It's been over a year, so this video might not get any views. But it is what it is. I just thought I'd show you guys how the season went. And I was pretty happy and proud of what we accomplished this year. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully we'll see you sometime soon.